Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's project is this shoe. Well, it's not just a shoe. This is a Florsheim Yuma model. Now, this is, uh, this is a pretty rare shoe. There aren't too many available out there. Um, this is a shell cordovan, which makes it a little bit more rare. And um, unfortunately, it's seen as the better days. It's been repaired a couple of times. The repairs aren't too bad. I've seen worse, but a couple of a couple of issues that that during the repair they narrowed the heels. So basically, we're going to take the whole shoe apart. Okay, literally take it apart. Take all these stitches out. Replace this binding right here. Replace that back piece right there. Do a full sole on the heel, new heel lining. Now, they were in a lot worse shape than this when I got them. Um, they were pretty much all wrinkled up, dried out like that. So what I did was, I took a pair of old lasts and um, basically I reshaped it to the size of the shoe. And wet them down and, and refit them in there to kind of give them some shape. Because um, I kind of need this to do what I have to do when it's completely disassembled I gotta make sure that I retain that shape of that original shoe so I think once it gets done it's gonna be almost like a new shoe alright let's get started alright here goes nothing These turned out pretty cool. Now, I'm not a last maker by by any means. Last making is a work of art in itself. But it took me a while just to kind of take some measurements and and make sure that um, it was a proper size. As you can see here, I had to add a piece of leather. See that right there to give it some um, give it a little bit of height and instep. Now these are old, so I got to be careful not to not to make more of a job than I have to. I'm going to basically replace whatever we can. I've got some shell cordovan leather, which that's that's the back part. We're gonna replace that heel heel counter piece back there. Alright. It's a basic construction, like a basic moccasin construction, right? In moccasin construction, you've got you've got the top piece here. This piece right here goes all the way underneath, comes out the other end. So it's all one piece. That's what they call moccasin style. This is not a good year welted shoe. Basically what they do is they'll take a midsole, which is this piece here, and they'll blake stitch that on there. Blake stitch means that basically it's stitched from it's stitched from the inside out. This is the outsole stitching right here. Even though it looks like a Goodyear welt, but it's not. It's just a midsole stitched to the uppers and then 
the sole is stitched to the midsole. Makes it look like a good year well to chew. Now I'm going to replace that, that midsole. I'm just carefully taking it apart. I'm not going to salvage that piece, but I want to retain that piece just for, for pattern's sake. <clears throat> Even though with the repair it's kind of lost, it's kind of lost its shape a little bit, but it gives me a general idea of, of what, you know, what size it was width-wise and everything else. doesn't see the stitches right here. That's what's holding the midsole to the uppers. I'm going to get rid of that also. These are cool shoes. I didn't know about these shoes. Um, I belong to a little group. Um, basically it's for like vintage shoes, right? On Facebook. And um, I love Florsheim Imperials, by the way. That's my favorite shoe. Some of you guys may know that. If you didn't, now you do. Anyway, somebody posted a picture. I'm like, what the hell is that? And they're like, that's the Yuma. I'm like, I've never seen that before. And, you know, that kind of led me to look into it. And um, it's a pretty cool shoe. It's very basic, you know, almost like a penny loafer type. But I don't know what makes it so rare. I guess they didn't make too many of them, you know. Especially some of them have um, shell cordovan, which is pretty cool. I mean, they're still they're still in the market. You can look for them. They're not cheap. I think I saw one the other day for like fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, imagine that old shoe, fifteen hundred dollars. But there are people who collect them, I guess. I'm gonna tell you guys how much I charge this guy. When the repair gets done, I'm gonna tell you. It's your basic tearing down shoes. There's really not much more to it than that. Once these nails come off, the footbed will be out of the shoe. I think the footbed is in pretty good shape. I'm going to keep that. I'm not going to. I'm not going to replace that. And I don't know what happened to the back of the heel. But it sure got torn up. You know? Anyway. Alright, we'll, we'll, um, we'll start tearing up the other one. And um, we'll be back. Alright, let's continue. <clears throat> yeah, it doesn't look like a shoe anymore, does it? <laughs> Yeah, you know. It'll look like this. And once it gets done, it'll look like a shoe. I told you guys I was going to take it apart. I know some of you guys are thinking, that's never going to look good. Oh my God, Steve ruined the shoes. Well, I got a surprise for you guys. So this is the binding, right? This is the this is the top piece right there. Now, if you see inside, see that piece right there? That's structural, okay? That doesn't allow this shape to get lost. That's a piece of some sort of a nylon cording webbing. I'm not sure what the heck they call it.
Now we're gonna we're gonna put a piece back here, right? We're gonna call that a heel lining. But the problem is that you've got you've got numbers there, serial numbers. Now the customer didn't say anything about those, but I'm not gonna cover those up. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut a new piece of leather and I'm gonna stamp those numbers back onto the new piece of leather. Well in case the guy you know wants to uh, basically know what date the shoes were made or serial numbers and so forth you know yeah they they have dates and they have serial numbers they have production cities where it was produced I mean all sorts of things now do, do I know what those numbers mean not the top of my head no but there are guys out there who have kind of decoded these old shoes and um, they'll tell you that okay it was made in such such date and such site such city plant state wherever it was made now here's another piece right here you see that little thin that structural support also at this stage I think I'm going to replace that put a new piece on there <clears throat> now I've got a pier, I've got a, a piece of um, shell cordovan leather, Horween leather, but unfortunately it's not the number eight that we need, like a cordovan color. But um, no worries, I'm going to basically dye that to match the uppers. I've got to clean the uppers anyway and add some color. So this is the back. This is the back piece that we're looking at right here. That's ultimately going to be replaced. What I'll do is I'll test spot a area that I'm going to dye on the, on the new leather. Make sure it looks okay. Make sure it works out okay. And then I'll go ahead and, and dye it to match. Try to match the shoes as best as I can. I think it'll be all right. So this is the basically this is the heel counter is what we call it. This is the stiffener that adds some support in the back well it's 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 not supporting anymore so we're gonna have to replace that so we're getting there as you can see all right let's continue all right so let me show you guys what I did this is basically a piece of leather stretched to the shape of the last right This is going to be the lining of the shoe. Okay? Now remember the moccasins are all one piece. Now I wasn't going to do this, right? I was going to I was just going to replace that you know, a piece on the inside to put a new lining in, but I mean, I've got it apart. There's a couple of wear spots into the lining in the inside part of the shoe. So I'm like, you know, I figured that maybe it might not be a bad idea to just. Now, what this does is, is, is sometimes, you know, you add leather to the body of the shoe, it's going to make it more snug. We've got a little bit of wiggle room. Over time, the shoe stretched a bit. Plus, it's a very thin piece of lining. It's not too thick. It's not very thin, but it's not too thick. It should be fine. I'm just marking this to make sure that there's no wrinkles where his foot's going to be. forget I still have to I still have to tag the mark the the insole with some numbers so I'm gonna let this dry and we'll take it back apart take it off the off the last 
and then um, stamp it and then put it back. I mean, the last shape, uh, it, it turned out pretty good, I must say. I'm pretty, I'm pretty surprised because most of the time when they make these wooden lasts, they take the shape of the foot measurements going across this way, this way, that way. I mean, every little thing that they can. But unfortunately, I didn't have the customer here to measure him, but I kind of went by the measurement of the shoe, which you'll probably hear people say that's the wrong way to do it. But sometimes you've got to improvise, unfortunately, like in this case. All right, let's continue. So this is the Horween leather I was telling you guys about. This is shell quarter, and this is horse hide. This is the hind quarters of the horse. Now this company has been in business for, I think, over 100 years, 115 years, maybe, maybe more, well, since 1905. They're located in Chicago, Illinois. Great leather. I mean, I had a chance to go to go to um, the tour to factory when I went and visited the Allen Edmonds factory, and I didn't have a chance to do the Horween. Unfortunately, I would have loved to have gone to it, but unfortunately, time was not on my side that week, so. I had to pass. I'm sure I'll get a chance again to go there one day. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece. Just like that. Just like that. And I'll go ahead and, um, and cut that exact. And then we're going to scribe the edges. Make the edges a little bit thinner. Because this is, this is a little bit heavier than, than what the original is. And then... Um, I lost the sample that I dyed, but I'll, I'll show you guys in a minute. It's here somewhere, small piece. And then we're going to go ahead and color it and see if we can kind of semi get that color something similar to that number eight. All right, let's continue. So what I did was I used a little bit of a Phoebe's Red along with Saphir Black. Mix those two together a bit. And we've got the color number eight. Well, close. It's not 100%. I'm sure there's more to it than that, right? But you know what? This is going to be just fine. I think once we get um, once we get the entire shoe clean and polished up, I think that's going to blend in very well with the rest of it. All right, let's continue. Not too bad. We hammer that down a little bit more to flatten it out. I'd say we're making progress. Now the color's a little bit off, yes, but we haven't touch this up yet so this will lighten up a little bit with some with some red in it and I'll do the reverse here I'll darken that up a little bit so it'll kind of have a it'll kind of meet in the, in the middle to kind of blend that in a little better than what it is all right let's continue this is the typeset that we're going to be using for the for the letters so literally we just have to Find each letter and numbers. Set it up on the machine. Three, six, two, four. Three, six, two, four. And the nine and the six can get a little tricky sometimes. 
three six two four nine eight. I've done in the past where I thought it was a nine, it was an eight, I mean it was a six. And um, that's why you always got to stamp it first on a sample piece. Because once it's stamped, I mean, this is okay, you're doing it on a piece of leather, like you can always change the leather, but if you're doing like a, a passport holder, a wallet, you know, you don't want to screw that up. Yes, I've made mistakes in the past, and I had to end up, well, for example, like like Bibles or stuff like that. I ended up buying one for a customer, unfortunately. I mean, it happens. Because some of the items that I emboss are not leather. They're bonded leather, which is not leather. It's paper. And you don't know what type of pressure that you're going to have to put on. You know, you don't have a sample piece to try out. So sometimes, sometimes it screws up, and we try to tell that to the customer that look, we're we're going to do the best we can, but at times there is an off chance that you know it might it might mess up. So, but you know what? When things happen, you gotta you gotta deal with it. You gotta make it work. That's all I can say. Three, 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 eight. That's a six. They're very small, as you can see. Sometimes the numbers can play tricks on your mind. F E. All right, so I'm going to set this up on the on the embosser, and I'm going to test a piece of leather out, and I'll show you guys how it turned out. All right, let's continue. All right, so we got it set up on the machine, so we're just going to test test one to see how well it'll be okay or not. Too bad. That's similar to. It's not exact. It's sim, same numbers, but see, they have something there. It says flex sole, right there. I'm not going to put that in there. As long as we got the the size of the foot eight e and the style number and the make and model, I think that's good enough. I think that'll be presentable. All right, let's continue. Okay, not too bad. It's coming along. Got the back stitched on there. Got the lining in. With the numbers. <laughs> I'm a bad man. I mean, bad in a good way. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, put our binding in. Okay. Once the binding gets done, we can go ahead and restitch this vamp on. And then we can start putting the heel, the this piece. Oh, it's coffee time. And then, um, then we can go ahead and put the midsole and clean up the uppers and do the soles and blah, 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 blah. And we'll be done. All right, let's continue. All right, so for the midsole, this is the midsole. Okay, this is basically the sole is attached to that and stitched on. Um, what I'm going to use is JR soles. Now, this is not the outsole. This is just the midsole. Now, JR has this product called JR Flex which is which is very flexible sole okay now it's usually meant for soles for like um, like Italian loafers where you don't we can't have it too stiff 
you want it to be flexible. But we're going to use this as a midsole to replace that. Now, this is slightly thinner than that one. But no worries, once, once I put it on, I'll sand this down a little bit to make it the same weight. We'll stitch it on and then attach our sole to that. So I marked that out right there. I'm going to cut it a little bit, little bit bigger, especially around the heel area here, because over time of repair, this has changed in size. This needs to be slightly larger than, than what it is now. So unfortunately, when we do that, I need to get this piece out of here. This is the heel and the heel base, OK? So when you make this piece a little wider, then this piece doesn't fit anymore. So we're going to replace that with a leather stacked heel base. Might as well. We're doing everything else brand new. So and we'll make that a little bit wider than what it is. All right, let's continue. Now, really important here, you see these stitches right here? These are the existing stitches, the white stitches right here. Okay. Obviously, that's the same pattern as that. Now, when we put this new sole on, you can't see where you're stitching, okay? So this is really important that we get this on point, if not a little bit off, it's okay, but as long as it's on the same line. So what happens is that if you stitch this midsole on at the wrong, if you, let's say you stitch a little bit wider, okay? So what happens on the inside? The inside dimension change gets a little bit tighter because the bottom there is flattening down and it, it's going to feel too snug. So we got to make sure we're right on cue. Now here, with the repair, there's double, see these two rows? Well, it's supposed to be a single roll. They, they didn't stitch it on the same spot when they repaired it. This side is not too bad. They're still in the same line, right? So I think the outside, when I say the outside, this side here, holes are the original holes. So we're going to go with that. All right, let's continue. So this is what we did, right? So I cut that right on the stitch line. Now, this becomes my pattern. Where's my pen? I keep losing my pen. I wish I had a pen holder I could put the pens in when I work. Hey! I have one. Okay, get back to work. So this will be our stitch line, right? But what we're going to do is that once we glue this on here, okay, we're going to basically make sure that line meets up with those stitch holes. We're going to take a small nail and puncture it through all the way to see where it comes out on those holes. Once we know that they're all lined up, we can go ahead and stitch it. Cool. Let's continue. So this is what we did, right? So I cut that right on the stitch line. And now this becomes my pattern. Where's my pen? I keep losing my pen. I wish I had a pen holder I could put the pens in when I work. Hey! I have one. Okay, get back to work. So this will be our stitch line, right? But what we're going to do is that once we glue this on here, okay, we're going to basically make sure that line meets up with those stitch holes. We're going to take a small nail and puncture it through all the way to see where it comes out on those holes. Once we know that they're all lined up, we can go ahead and stitch it. Cool. Let's continue. Okay, so at this stage, we're going to go ahead and glue the binding on. A little bit of glue. All 
binding is just a small piece of leather. That's all. Just looking at something here, I just noticed. You guys see that cut? I want that to be. That's going to be. I think I could hide that on the inside. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll tuck that in on the inside. Part of that inside piece is going to get cut. I've cut it a little bit longer. I sure don't want, I sure don't want that to be visible. So this piece is basically hiding all those little details on the edge. You see how it's got like all the pieces there? So that's what basically bindings do. Now this binding is um, has two stitches. First, what we're going to do, we're going to glue this on like that. Run the stitch, fold it over like this, and run another stitch right on the bottom of that stitch that we just stitched bottom of the stitch that we just stitched. Or you understand what I'm talking about. I mean, that's how it was done. I don't know why they did it that way, but I don't really care. I'm going to duplicate it like it was before. Why mess with something that's already been perfected? I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here, you know. Luckily this glue is a fast drying glue. Doesn't take too long for it to dry. good for stitches like this for stitching work because you don't want you don't want the you don't want the glue to be like caked on you know what I mean because um, if it's if it's too much glue then the thread gets stuck in a needle and it doesn't advance the thread so this kind of glue is pretty light it's an all-purpose cement uh, master's all-purpose cement. That's my go-to glue that I use all the time. Okay, we got this piece on now. We're going to go ahead and stitch it, fold it over, and stitch it one more time, and then cut the axis off on the inside because I left that long. And we can cut we can cut the rest of it off on the inside. All right, let's continue. Okay, not too bad. Still gotta clean it up a little bit. It's not looks a little bit rough, but I think with a little bit of conditioning and polishing, the stitch holes will look better. All right, let's continue.
So now we get to restitch the vamp back to the shoe. I know there's probably more more ways than doing this than what I'm doing. Maybe different needles, different thread. But you know what? This will work out just fine. Now you guys got to remember, I'm not a shoemaker by trade, right? So some of these things, some of the ways I do things are not your typical proper ways. But I mean, it, it works. You know? And result, it'll work out good. Not too bad. Besides, it's not too hard. I mean, it's just following the holes that, that are already there. You know? Just gotta run a needle through it and, and pull. You gotta find the hole first. So it's getting there, as you guys can see. A little bit of you know peace time here, just kind of relaxing. We're closed today, so there's no, no phones, no customers. I like it. Let's continue. <clears throat> All right. It's getting there slowly but surely, right? Now we can focus on doing the bottom. I think it turned out pretty good. The hard part is over. I still have to put some conditioners on here still. You know, I put two coats on, but it doesn't hurt putting more on because uh, it's very old. It's too dry. All right, let's continue. So now we got the midsole on, okay? We're going to find out where we're going to stitch the stitch. So if you if you look at the shoe at this angle here, and pull the uppers away the holes are evident where they are and then what you do is you kind of eyeball the pen mark to the holes that are on the uppers now once once I draw that line in there okay what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get a couple of thin nails and poke through and see where that nail comes out to. It should come right on the money. I hope anyway. And don't forget we still have this piece here, the old piece, right? If we have if we line up if we mark if we line up a couple of the marks and then put this on top, then we can get the basic idea of exactly where the stitch holes are. And Looks pretty good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch this and uh, keep my fingers crossed. I'm gonna try to stitch it all the way around here. I'll see what happens. All right, let's continue. All right, this is the Blake stitch machine.
Sometimes I've got to hold my breath when I'm using this machine, you know? We have a love and hate relationship. Right now, I love this machine. Oh, wait, I'm not looking. Wait, I gotta. That's premature love, hold on. Now, we're not gonna be able to tell from the inside if we stitched in the right spot because we put a new insole, you know, inside lining where it covered the old stitches. But what you can do, you can look through the sides here and see if you can see the money. Now, I mean, see the stitch holes. Now, you see, I don't know if you can see this, you see a little bit of the stitch hole on the side. I think it'll be okay. It's not too bad. The shape of it looks good. Cool. I'm happy with it. All right, let's continue. And we can't forget about hammering, right? We gotta hammer these stitches down to flatten them out. Not too much hammering right now, but there will be some later. You kids better put your earmuffs on. There's gonna be some hammering going on. All right, let's continue. Man, it's looking really nice. I have to admit, I mean, this is looking really nice. Nice clean stitches. Now there's a lot of powder in there. So we'll wipe that down and condition it for more time. So it'll look even cleaner. All right. From time to time, I'll sand the head of my hammer to smooth it out because I don't want to leave any marks on the sole when I'm hammering it. Because sometimes, you know, you hammer nails and and um, nail setters and stuff like that, and it, it damages the, the head of the hammer. <clears throat> I went ahead and stamped that Floor Shine Imperial. Now see the access stamp right there, like extra stamp right on top there? That's no problem, we'll sand that off. I hate my last moving. I try to lock it in, but there's not really a lock in there. I just uh, put a little piece of leather so it'll tighten it up. I just hate when it, when it moves. Some people use it, they love they love moving it around, you know, the, the head of the last. I, I can't stand it. My employee does it, but I just I just can't stand it when it moves. Everybody does it differently. <clears throat> Alright, we'll cut the access off. Trim the edges, rough trim. Open a channel, stitch it. Trim it again, burnish the edges, put our heel block on, top lift, buff, polish, condition, and we are done. All right, let's continue. sole stitcher because it stitches on the outside of the sole. Hence out sole stitcher. Man that's beautiful. Look at those stitches. Wow. Brand new one set of stitches. No double stitching, no other holes. Red thread. 
cool. All right, let's continue. Not enough hammer in this video. It's hammer time. She's getting there. She's getting there. It's looking good. All right, let's continue. All right. So we're getting there. So now I'm going to nail the heel from the inside, securing the heel base and the lift together to the inside part of the shoe. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I think it turned out real well. I mean, you know, I, I, I do a lot of jobs, right? And, um, yeah, I get excited about most of the jobs because I'm happy with what I do. But there are just a few jobs that are, you know, are kind of cool to just to see it's finished because when I look at a job and it's already done in my head you know but this particular one I don't know it's kind of a it was kind of beyond my expectation because first of all I mean this is just to make a just to make the last this, this you know last like that was to me was a major achievement even though I didn't know what the hell I was doing because uh, again that's an art form in itself making lasts but I kind of I kind of needed it for this pair or I thought I needed it because I had to take the whole thing apart now I didn't plan on putting a whole new lining in there that was not part of the plan at all and um, once I took it apart, I noticed a couple of areas of the toes, of the toes, um, they were kind of worn out a little bit, like inside part here, there. And um, I just kind of felt like, you know what? I'm taking this thing apart. Why don't I go ahead and do that? Well, luckily I had made the last for it before I decided that this way I can it comes in handy. But I think it turned out overall, turned out pretty good. Still need to buff the uppers and, and clean that up a little bit and trim the heels. Trim this area right here. And then uh, we'll be almost ready to go. Alright, let's continue. You guys ready? I'm really happy the way it turned out. And look at that. Man, that's just popping. The serial numbers. Binding in the back, remember that? Reassembled everything and got everything done. I had fun with these shoes, really cool shoes. I love these. These are going to last the guy, God willing, another 30 years, right? These have got to be about 30 years old right now, the way they are. So they're in incredible shape. And since the back of the heel was falling apart, I assumed that the customer was not using a shoehorn. So guess what? I made one for him. Well, I didn't make the metal shoehorn, but whoa! I'll be right back. If 
It's not the camera, it's something out of my hand. Look at that. It's a leather cover shoehorn with the Floresheim logo on there. Now that's awesome. I think I might start making these and selling these because there's a lot of guys out there who love Floresheims. So he's going to use this. He's going to have to use it. He's going to promise me. I'm going to make him promise me he's going to use this or I'm not sending him his shoes. I'm serious. No, I'm not. I'll send him his shoes anyway. All right. So thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate this. This was... Um, this was a different project for me. I don't think I've ever really taken a shoe apart like that and put them back together. Luckily, it was not that difficult of a of a style, you know, so it wasn't a Goodyear welted shoe. That would have been a little bit more difficult to do, but not impossible. Anything is possible. All right, so uh, if you want to share, um, comment. If you have any questions, please email me, beatos at yahoo.com. You can go to my page on YouTube, with then click on About. It'll have all my information. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. Take care.